going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Locks DFS NHL Breakdown. I'm your host, Addy Narang. I'll be breaking down this six-game main say on DraftKings and FanDuel for Friday, March 29th. Um, before I get into that, though, if you guys want to go ahead and leave a like and comment on this video, not only would it mean a lot to me, but you would also be entered into winning our free season pass giveaway. The MLB season just started yesterday, um, so if you go ahead and win that giveaway, you get a get some good value if you go ahead and get that MLB season pass. So definitely look into that. And also, I posted an MLB video today. I know I have a, a tight group of NHL followers. So if you guys want to go check that out, that'd be much appreciated. Um, I think it could definitely help you. I, I made it in a similar mold to this video. So if you enjoy these videos, you'll probably enjoy that one as well. Um, but with that being said, let's get into this slate. So six game slate, few teams in a great spot, few teams on a back to back. Um, but uh definitely a bunch of spots that we can uh let's see mlb is back people are excited but all right let me get into this a bunch of spots that we can definitely target on this slate so starting where we usually start at high price center uh my top option again is going to be nathan mckinnon uh leading the way at center for the colorado avalanche so he has a great matchup versus the arizona coyotes on, um who are playing in colorado obviously we know colorado at home is a much better hockey team than colorado on the road similar with all colorado sports really the nuggets at home the rockies at home um colorado teams just do better at altitude i suppose so uh, but anyways, Arizona allowing the sixth most high danger chances against per 60 at 12.77. Uh, great spot for Colorado to just take advantage of them on the power play or on uh, 5v5 and on the power play where they rank in the bottom 10 in the penalty kill. Um, the news for out of Colorado right now is that Gabriel Landeskog is due back. Um, and so I'm assuming he'll slot in somewhere on this first line. Um, although they've been having success with it, we could see someone like JT Comfort drop off to the second line. Um... But Colorado has a plethora of guys who who play center naturally, but can also play the wing. Like Kerfoot and Confer are probably natural centers, uh, but they just so happen to be able to play the wing as well. Um, and this line's been having success. They've been giving it up defensively a little bit, but offensively they've been generating a bunch of chances. Um, and I think that's coming on the backs of Nathan McKinnon taking on an increased shooting role. Uh, just love this spot for him in general. 8.1K. I could talk for days about why he's a he's an awesome play. The guy. Oh, and in addition to everything else, the guy's been skating like 24 minutes a night uh, for a Colorado team that's still fighting for that last playoff spot. Uh, looking pretty good right now, but uh, still got to hold off teams like Arizona. So definitely going to be a good competitive game. Um, it should be a ton of value for McKinnon at 8-1. Scrolling down a bit farther, Calgary put together their uh, – their first line, I, I don't know if you guys remember last game, they switched it up. They had Derek Ryan centering Goudreau and Monaghan on the third line with James Neal, and it didn't work at all. Um, they lost to the Stars 2-1, so they went back to their usual Calgary one line, which is just the dominant line that has been all season. Goudreau, Monaghan, Lindholm. Uh, Monaghan at 6-4 is just a bit too cheap uh, for that role, so I would love getting exposure to Calgary one through him. Uh, Elias Lindholm was also quite cheap. Um, and then if we scroll down a little bit farther, um, not too much in the real cheap value range, but I do like this price on Nico Heischer at 5.3K. We're seeing some reverse line movement come in on New Jersey. They open at 2.6, uh, an implied team total of 2.6, received about 50% of the bets, and they move from plus 122 to minus 105 on the money line. Uh, decent reverse line movement. That's mainly because Detroit... I mean, they're the worst team in the league, high danger chances against per 60. But this New Jersey team struggles to generate chances in its own right, ranking 30th in high danger chances for per 60. So kind of like a, 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 a weird spot to target. But um, I just think a lot of these New Jersey guys are underpriced. He sure skating on that top line with um, Kyle Palmieri and Kenny Agostino. You can stack that line for super cheap. You could pick one or the other. Um, so I think it's that and Detroit's on a back to back. They played an OT game yesterday at Buffalo and then traveled back to Detroit. So could definitely see some tired legs there that uh, New Jersey could take advantage of. Um, scrolling forward a little bit, favor high price option. I'm going to have to stick with Calgary one here. They're just in such a good spot versus Anaheim. I didn't talk too much about the matchup when I was talking about Monaghan, but Calgary implied for a 3.8 team total. That's 0.6 high, high, uh, uh, higher than the next highest team total on the slate um, and it makes sense Anaheim the third worst team high danger chances against per 60 um, they had a period where they were playing better defensively but now they've gone back to where they've been all season which is just garbage um, bad on the penalty kill as well and ranking bottom five and expect the goals against per 60 so 
a spot that you definitely want to target with Johnny Goudreau and Elias Lindholm here at 6.1k. I think they're both really, really good values. Um, the last spot I want to talk about is over in St. Louis. So I'll go ahead and run this. So we have our uh, standard St. Louis one line, O'Reilly, Tarasenko, Shen. And Braden Shen is fairly underpriced for that uh, for that role. 5.3K, skating on the first line, first team power play time as well. Uh, the Rangers are a matchup that we've been attacking for a while now. They've been playing a little bit better um, defensively uh, just from watching them, but the numbers don't reflect it. 14.92 high danger chances against per 60. That's second worst on the slate and still bottom five expected goals against per 60. And the spot that you really can target them is on the penalty kill where they rank uh, in the bottom six as well. I believe they're the sixth worst penalty kill in the league. Um, so definitely a spot to look towards for uh, some value with some uh, with some braided shed on that St. Louis one line. And then if you do want to scroll down a bit farther, uh, I just got to mention Alexander Kerfer here at 3.8K. Gabriel Landeskog, as I said, expected back. So he will probably bump one of them off the first line. But there's also a decent chance that they just slot him in on the... Excuse me. There's also a decent chance that they just slot him in on the second line like they had Miko Ranton in there with Tyson Yost. And we may see Colorado 1 stay intact. So if that does happen, I think you can project another 19 minutes time on ice for Kerfoot and a power play 1 line 1 role, which is something that's super, super coveted. Um, and so if we do get more news on that as the as we get closer to lock, then I love Kerfoot here at 3.8K. Um, and that'll probably do it for wingers. So let's go ahead and move on to defense where my favorite top price option. We're going right back to Calgary. Mark Giordano, the guy's just been um, a machine recently. He helped me to that second place win a um, couple games ago, a couple slates ago. He's not the guy. He's not a guy that I I, I don't th I don't believe I had him in my lineup when it locked. I believe I pivoted onto him because he's just a really high. I, I realized I was close to banking that tournament and I could have used a high floor, high upside kind of player like Mark Giordano in there. And he did that for me. I mean, he he put on nine shots on goal, four and a half fantasy points. Didn't block a single shot. Didn't pick up a single point, and still put up four and a half. Just kind of what you're getting with him. I mean, his shots the past four games nine, six, three, five. Um, he's not really blocking too many shots, but he still has that upside. Um, he's going to skate 25 minutes time on ice. An elite matchup versus Anaheim correlates really, really well with the rest of Calgary, especially Calgary one. Definitely a guy that uh, I think you want ample exposure to on this slate. Um, and then scrolling down a bit farther, the last guy I wanted to talk about, where did he go? Let me just pull it up here. So it was Damon Severson and Will Butcher. Both these guys, Sammy Votnin doesn't look like he's going to play in this game, um, which creates a, uh, a minutes role for these two guys. So Severson skating on the first unit power play with Heeshear, Palmieri, Zajac, Coleman. Um, and then Butcher is manning the second unit power play with Agostino, Zacha, Stafford, and Wood. Uh, both spots that I think you can target. I think we could see both guys push, uh, or I think we could see Butcher push 20 minutes time on ice. Severson probably in his usual 25 minute role with Vaughn and out could definitely be higher. Um, but a great spot versus them, or for them versus the Detroit team, as I mentioned, giving up the most high danger chances against per 60 on the road. I mean, on the over the last 10 games and then in addition to that um they're playing on a road back to back so not an ideal situation if you're detroit um and a real good situation to take advantage of uh if you're new jersey and then lastly uh scrolling down even farther another guy that helped me on my uh to take second place in that tournament was rasmus anderson here he's been skating consistent minutes time on ice about 17 to 20 minutes um, he's 2.7K, and he's got a, a sizable role on the second unit power play. And they even switched it up a little bit and had him and Giordano man the same power play unit at one point when I was watching that game, which would definitely be a massive boost to his value if that were to hold. Um, but for 2.7K, I think he's probably the top value uh, defense punt um, just because of what he lets you do with the rest of your lineup and the fact that he's in and of itself a really, really good play. So. With that being said, um, moving on to goalie, as usual, uh, just look at your team, your centers, your wings, your defensemen, and correlate your goalie with them so that if they do well, your goalie gets the win because goalie is just such a high variance, difficult position to predict. Um, I like Philip Grubauer. I mean, the dude's been incredibly hot. Um, he's a guy that helped me take second as well, just stoning the Golden Knights for a, a, good, a good portion of the game and giving up some tough goals. 
But 7.6K, he, he was the NHL star, uh, star of the week this past week. Uh, he's got like a 960 save percentage or even higher now. So a uh, big fan of Grubauer here. Definitely think you can go there in both cash and tournaments. So uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Go ahead and leave a like and comment to be entered into that weekly giveaway that we run every single week for a free season pass. Um, but yeah, with that being said, hope you guys win a ton of money tonight, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Peace.